get together for a long time. Ron Schlump, uh, formerly of Arame Salon. Correct. We had an interview early on, uh, I think maybe at Danford's. We did. We actually had one at Danford's, and then you actually reached out, and we spoke uh, during the pandemic closure. I think it was April of 2020, so it was kind of during our shutdown here in this region. Oh, yeah. And uh, we did it. I, I was in my office at my home, and I guess you were doing the same because nobody could go out at that time because of the uh, pandemic challenges. But uh, yeah, so this is uh, this is I think the third time I had the opportunity to, to chat with you, which is great. You know, looking back at that time, it's you know I was out last night and it was just completely back to normal. I went to a place called the Warehouse in Amityville, which was absolutely a wonderful music place, and I and I was just you know no sign of any pandemic. Right, but right, right. In some ways, it seemed like 100 years, and in some ways, it seemed like uh, what it was. It's yeah, just it's so it, weird. Crazy times. Uh, but it's good to, good to be back, uh, uh, you know, uh, call it some form of normal. Anyway, that was just a crazy time, and it's good to, good to be out of that. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about how maybe some villagers may know you. Okay. Your business here for many years, right here in Trader's Cove. Sure. Uh, tell me about that. Well, we had, uh, my wife and I owned the uh, Arame Salon and Spa. It was formerly Cove 7. And uh, her and her brother actually came into the business, I want to say it was April 97. Ironically, the same year, same, same month I met my wife. Uh, okay. I actually met her in the building there. And then several years later, uh, my uh, brother-in-law moved further west, and it just didn't make sense ge uh, geographically to stick around. So uh, I ended up becoming my wife's partner in the uh, salon business, which I knew nothing about. So I became a student of that business for many years. And uh, so we've been in that, uh, we were in that area, geez, it was probably close to 22 20 years. years, a little over 20 years. Uh, again, the first stretch of that, as I mentioned to you, I was kind of like the repair guy. I didn't really get involved with the business snow removal, handyman stuff, but uh, but then I got engaged uh, really deeply into the business about 2008, 2009 area. As a stylist, as an actual? Oh, actually, no, just- Never uh, that, okay. Ne I never d uh, performed any services. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, okay. just uh, just really ran the business. Background, the operational. Back, the, the correct, business. So man. many businesses need. Yeah, and, and, and oddly enough, I don't know how a lot of owners, and I, I you know, I met a lot of salon owners throughout the, the tenure when we were there, and I don't know how some of them could actually perform services and run the business too, because there's a lot to both ends, uh, as, as I'm sure you're aware. So it was uh, it was a good uh, good run. We had a lot of uh, a lot of neat customers, a good following, and uh, so it was uh, it was a good uh, good run that we had there for sure. For sure, excellent. And so now uh, you're still a member of the Chamber of Commerce, okay. correct? Yes, yeah. Uh, with your new business. Uh, you know what? I haven't signed up for the new business yet, so okay. that's that's uh, that's on deck. <laughs> okay, that's on deck. We'll yeah. uh, tell uh, Miss Ransom. That. Yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Let her know for sure. Uh, so yeah, um, about I guess you know, kind of rewinding just slightly. We closed mm -hmm. our business. Uh, twenty one, right? Uh, twenty two, actually. Oh, twenty two. January twenty two. It's been a little bit over a year now, and that was because of some health challenges that uh, mm -hmm. arose with my wife, and uh, so kind of led into where I'm at right now. Um, I was, uh, as I mentioned, running the business part and managing a lot of the content. Uh, and that, we were on about five, I guess you could say five different platforms. Email communication, certainly with our clients. Uh, Facebook and Instagram certainly were two platforms. Um, the website blog I managed and also our Google business page, which, uh, you know, got updates often. So that was kind of the five platforms. And it kind of help me segue into where I am today, uh, which is uh, Live Edge Content Designs. So this is the new business. Correct. You've just started in 22, 23, really. You Re yeah, just, I mean, I probably, it was probably the latter part of 22, but I really just started getting out recently, uh, uh, latter part of, uh, in fact, I think we ran into each other, I want to say it was the November chamber meeting. Right. Uh, and so that was kind of one of my first events to go to publicly where I was kind of networking and, and uh, handing out new Getting business out cards. There. Yeah, exactly. So one of the things I noticed on, on the definition of what the business does, which I think is a really valuable service, is the actual act of copywriting. Mm -hmm. Explain that to us, uh, because I think it's easy for people to put up Facebook posts. I think it's very hard for most businesses to really think out what they're trying to communicate. Right. 
So I think it's a really valuable service. I agree, and I learned a lot about it uh, during my salon tenure, if you will, because I knew that that would be that that that, that makes a difference with businesses. Um, you know how you say things, and you want to you want to. Uh, I think the foundation of any of this is starting with the correct target audience. And that's what I've discovered. Um, you may have heard of the term avatar or a customer persona. Kind of who's that ideal customer? Who's that ideal client? Who's that ideal patient? Mm -hmm. uh, depending on your business, obviously. And what I've discovered then and even now today when I'm, when I'm working with other businesses now uh, besides my own is that a lot of businesses aren't crystal clear on that. No, and you really, most aren't. you really need to get crystal clear on who your target audience is, or else you're you're just casting too big a net. You really, as crazy as it sounds, you want to make that net a little smaller so you get to that target audience who appreciates what you do and you appreciate them. It's you know it's a two way street, but I think with the copywriting piece, that's the foundation. When I start with a new client, is hey, listen, let's let's if you don't know your ideal client, let's get to that point first, and then we could start messaging that person. And I think it's not only I think it's equally important to let folks know who you, who you serve, but maybe also who you may not serve, because you know that waste. That, yeah, because then you're again you're you're just targeting somebody that who who may not just appreciate what you do or whatever the case uh, you know is. So I think it's important that you not only message to the people uh, who you who you feel is your target audience or your avatars, but I think it's also good in that messaging to maybe let folks know who 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 may not be uh, of good. You, who you serve. Know what your limits are. Know what your focus is. A, an example that's a little off what we're talking about in copyright, but I, I often tell people about, for example, uh, Coliseo Pizza, right? Okay. So Coliseo Pizza. I know. <laughs> they, do, they do one thing well. You know, um, there was a time where I don't even think they had salad. It was just great pizza. Right, right. And no credit cards. And as you know, they're extremely successful, but they had that signature taste and it was just pizza and... They did it well, I mean, and it was just, and it, it paid off for them. For right, sure. right, and that's a great point uh, to to just focus on what you're good at. You know, a lot of times, and, and you know this, you can't please everybody ever. Oh yeah, it, you know that's just it doesn't happen in human nature, and so uh, it's really important again to get drilled down and find out who that ideal avatar, that perfect customer is for you, that ideal client, and uh, and message to them to them uh, often. <laughs> Do you have a real case scenario? Somebody, and you don't have to name them by name, but sure. somebody, you know. An example of who you work with and how their business got better or they realized some of the things that you wanted them to realize? Uh, I'm actually working with a client now uh, where, um, I don't know if you've heard of the term SEO, which just stands for search sure. engine optimization, but um, look through the website and um, it's a gradual progression with SEO as you try to optimize somebody's website, but in this case, um, I could tell that all the pages that I've looked at so far, and, and you may be familiar, and I'm using a website as an example here, mm -hmm. but there's an about page, a home page, maybe a product page, a, a comparison page, maybe Contact to us. Account, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's ideal, it doesn't happen overnight, but it's ideal to optimize each one of these pages where basically, and I'll just try to give you the Reader's Digest version, I would write some copy for that page, mm -hmm. but it's more. Uh, HTML copy. It's not. I, I'm not a technical computer wizard, so to speak. But I would write the copy for that page, and then give it to a technical person where they could plug it integrate. into the website, integrate it into the website, and that just helps um, helps these uh, businesses get noticed in this business in, in particular. Right. Uh, we've heard of Google, and, and Google has I don't know what you want to call it, Google bots or, or spiders, or but they index the web and they index pages, and, and you know they're they're very good at it and they've gotten better. Um, and what this SEO does is basically gets them noticed. You know, Google's whole uh, you know they want to make sure that when somebody's searching for something, they provide the results that the what the search's intent is. And, and that's the job with the, with the SEO scenario, where you wanna just make sure that the, the keywords are selected, keyword phrases are selected, that is gonna get these folks noticed in whatever line of business they're in. I try to keep my focus with local businesses because I was a local business, so sure. I feel I could serve that yes. audience, if you will, better. Uh, so that would be one, maybe one example of where, you know, again, it just doesn't happen overnight. If somebody came to me and said, hey, listen, I wanna, 
I want to uh, rank number one for this particular keyword in a week, I would just say, hey, listen, maybe Impossible. we're not a fit because yeah. <laughs> that's just something I can't do. Maybe somebody else out there Nobody can, is. but I, I'm not sure that's a possibility. <laughs> But, uh, but this is a case where, and it, it'll be a work in progress, progress. What I've done with this client is I'm only doing five, five pages. And then we're going to basically st- sit back and see how these five pages perform. And I'll have um, the client's technical website designer monitor this. And I can as well. Comparison. Uh, exactly. And just compare it to these other pages because I think sometimes – um, uh, people may not realize the, the, the significant effect this can have over time, and it just builds. So uh, that's one example, mm-hmm. I think, in the SEO universe, which is very popular now because I don't have to tell you to pay for traffic. It gets very expensive. Right. I think it's gotten more expensive, at least like everything has over time. So you want to really rank well in the organic searches, you know, and, and the way to do that is just to make sure that your your website and your content is, is SEO I don't want to say optimized because that's kind of it's just search engine optimized for uh, for the search of the wherever that business is or niche that they're in. What about in terms of um, being consistent in a brand? Do you work with, for example, brochures or flyers I, and or pieces that are digital and not digital? Yes, that's to a, bring together a converted. Um, that's a that's a, a great solid brand. Yeah, that's a great question. And yes. Uh, I've done, I haven't done, I don't have a client today as we speak that needs this. I've done it in my own business in the past. And yes, it's important to have, I guess you would say multiple mediums that you're communicating in because as you know, there's not one demographic that just does social media. There's not one that just does hard mail and, and, and papers. So it's good to have a mix of, of the different types of mediums that you can, whether it's a, a brochure that you or I could pick up and read, or if it's a digital copy that maybe can print it, can be printed into mm-hmm. a, a PDF or something like that. So it's, I think it's important that, again, there is a, there is a, a game plan, and uh, you do have a couple of different pieces where you, a couple of touch points where you can uh, reach that target audience of yours. You know, and again, a lot's going to be driven by that avatar or that ideal customer depending on who that audience is that may drive what mediums you you know for example if you've got a very very young audience well social may weigh pretty heavily where less printed and you know hard copy items may Mm -hmm. may not be as as important so i think you know i'll go back to that target audience it's so important to really dig deep and make sure that you get that avatar first because you, you know again if that's not established at the beginning, then anything that I do or anybody else does, whether it's copywriting, content writing, it's just it's it's kind of shooting off into all different directions, you know. Okay. So it's it's not get it's not reaching that audience you wanted to. And again, what you said about yourself being a business in business for twenty years it can't help enough. That's a that's really important. It, it really is helpful. And again, you you know, it's tough. I don't have to tell you, uh, being an entrepreneur is not an easy task. You know, corporate world is, and I've lived that for many years before uh, coming into the self employed universe uh, and, and both are challenging there's no question there's not one that's a, a mm-hmm. cakewalk and one that's not but uh, but being in business you really you, you really learn a lot and sometimes on the seat of your pants it's it, it's it, it, it really is and and uh, you really you know you, you have to stay on your toes obviously and it's it's a challenge but uh, it, at the end of the day it, it, it usually is a, a rewarding challenge no doubt you had sent me some pictures which I think uh, you said was sort of the inspiration for naming your company yes uh, live uh, content design well, live edge content design correct uh, you sent me some live edge and I just learned from those pictures what that word means I never knew that but really cool talk to us about that. yeah I'll, I'll show the pictures in the background sure uh, what basically uh, you know I don't, I don't know the exact definition if you googled it but however it's basically a, um, a piece of wood that is a um, you know cut obviously from a tree it still has the bark on it and i was making tables and benches out of it it's a pretty easy process i mean a belt sander urethane you have to get legs because that's obviously you're not going to have a really good sturdy bench or table without legs but uh, so i started making these while we were still open and brought these pieces into our salon and i started building shelves with some you know wood and branches and it really uh it, it, it was a nice touch and earthy. Lo- yeah, very earthy uh, for sure and are you uh, selling that are you in the business of selling no uh, ironically at the uh, there was one point in time where my clients were like oh, well, I'm uh, sure they were like wow you know you should go into business selling this and and it's funny i had that thought briefly and i thought you know i'd have to sell an awful lot of these and true and I was getting him at one point out east. Uh, there was a gentleman on Sound Avenue. He's since moved. 
uh, where he sell, sold these live edge uh, pieces of logs and, and, and wood. He's gone and, and to find sources for this sometimes could be challenging. So there, there was a point where I was thinking about that and I, mm -hmm. I started looking into it and I said, you know what, maybe maybe the time's not right at yeah, this stage. Then you're into inventory and like uh, and then, and the warehousing. warehousing and, uh, yeah, right. yeah. So uh, I still enjoy it and I, I, I do it more one off. I mean, we have several pieces in our house now. Uh, we did sell some of the pieces when we uh, when we left the the you know the neighboring town uh, building over here, and uh, but it's a, it, it's a neat little hobby and it really does add a nice little personality to 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 a little table or bench which usually doesn't have much personality. <laughs> so you've been in corporate, you've been in business, small business, uh, a little a little bit on the live edge, <laughs> and now you're certainly back in businesses, servicing business. But I asked you uh, earlier, I said. You know, what is it? We all have a dream, right? I'm sitting here with my guitar here, right? That's what I really wanted to do my whole life was uh, play play guitar. And I right. did play guitar, but I mean, like, you know, worldwide. You, you you had a dream as well. Yes. Um, and I, I'm interested in this because I think you say you still play hockey? Well, I... I, I recently? I, recently, a couple of years, I stopped a couple of years back after a knee injury. But uh, I still skate. But I started playing ice hockey, gosh, I must have been six or seven. Very young age. And played through college. And I mentioned that. that was a great question, by the way. I mentioned that because uh, NHL scout was my answer. Now, I don't know that I actually would love to do that. I think mm -hmm. I would. Mm -hmm. But I just find it neat uh, what I know about that position. Again, just traveling around some of these backwoods towns and colleges and maybe up in Canada could be other parts of the world, too. And just discovering young talent that, you know, eventually will show show up in maybe the NHL one day. So I, I you know, I, 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 again, I love that question. And I just, uh, it's one of those things where I don't know that I would actually love it. I think I would though. You would love yeah, it. Yeah, I, I would. I think skating is one of those things you really should do by six or seven. Otherwise, I once got on skates and it was not a pretty picture. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, you're right. Usually, right. usually the early you start the better. I mean, I think, I, I think I've read about some players who didn't start maybe until 10 or 11, but generally speaking, most folks, uh, th at least that I know, have started at a young, you know, a very young, very young age. Somebody that's in business mm -hmm. sees this interview, likes what they see, likes your hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> Did your wife cut your hair? She used to. Okay. Not anymore. Not anymore. But thank you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> No, likes what you're putting across and wants to uh, do business with you. What do you offer a potential client? Well, every client, uh, I uh, conduct what's called a discovery call, and it's complimentary. And basically, I will uh, hop on the phone with them and kind of see what their goal is uh, with their business and, you know, go through some questions. Or maybe they don't know their goal. Oh, maybe, well, maybe, maybe, maybe they need a little assistance there, too, you know, or maybe they don't know that avatar, uh, that perfect client they're looking for. Uh, but I get on a hop on a discovery call, usually runs half hour to 45 minutes. And that really kind of lays the foundation to say, okay, can we do something here? Is this going to be a fit or, or maybe not? You know, it's not obviously like anything. It's not always uh, perfect, but uh, that's the start of, of any relationship that I have with, uh, with the content or copywriting is to really kind of dig deep and, and, and have a nice conversation uh, heart to heart with a, with a business owner and see hey where can, where could we go with this and then offer a summary back to them exactly so they know uh, exactly sort of what and the road is ahead that's correct that's Excellent. correct again Ron Schlump yes I uh, got that right and live edge, edge. content design right uh, correct inspired by live edge woodworking it's a pleasure having you today great to be here Come back, let us know how you're doing with the business, and good luck with it. I appreciate that. You know, Thank you. Uh, by the way, this is for uh, anybody that's interested in work with Ron in Port Jefferson, but also all over Long Island. Correct. And, uh, you know, around the nation even, because it's that type of service. It is. It is. As long as I have an internet connection and I can get content and copywriting documentation to a client, it, it could really, it, it really is geographically, it's not limited. Yeah. I love the, again, I can't say enough about the copyright because it's you that's now being focused and well thought out. And I find that most small business owners are so harried with running a business, they can't even sit down and think out their strategy. And I will, I will say that this is a very valuable service. And, and I thank you for that. And I agree 100% because I was that person. I was that right. business owner. And, and, you know, rushing to get these communications out, which are, you know, it's valuable communication. If nothing else, they become sort of responsible to you. Right. And I think people like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm one of those people that like to be coached. Correct. Like I can 
you know, whatever it might be, whether it be exercising, diet, or even learning something, please coach me because now I become responsible to a- you. Absolutely. gives you a level of accountability. That's the word. I'm and uh, and I today as we speak, and you bring up a great point, I actually get coached by a, a professional copywriter. There you go. Uh, probably once or twice a month I have conversations, and this gentleman is just – it sets me straight when I need it, and it's it's very valuable. Very good, Ron. It's a pleasure having you today. Great to be here. All right, take care. All right, thanks. You too.